Hello, welcome back to yet another episode in CSC 263, Database Management Systems at Adelphi University. In the previous uh, few episodes, we looked at the data manipulation language um, and how we can create queries that retrieve data from a single relation. We looked at the simple store and retrieve solution where we first put data into a table and then um, try to retrieve it again. Um, and maybe we apply some selection or projections to it. And we looked at the use of aggregate functions that um, we actually apply some operations to groupings of the data that is stored in a single relation. In this video, we're going to go one step further and we're going to explore a few different ways in which we can ask data um, from the database um, that spans multiple queries, uh, multiple tables. And that's a little different than what we have seen so far. Specifically, we're going to look at um, what would be um, the um, more traditional syntax, which uses the Cartesian product uh, to achieve what we want to do. And then we'll look at the join operator um, that is um, present in most modern database management systems as well. We'll also explore the difference between a left outer join and a right outer join in the way that we create queries. Let's take a look at the schema that we've been working off so far. We have the grades table, that's the one in the middle, and it links um, to the students table on top and the courses table on the bottom. And you can really see how that grades table links the entire database schema together. The grades table records what students received a grade in a particular term for a particular course. It also records the date on which the grade was posted. Because of the foreign key relationships, only those students who exist uh, can receive grades for courses that exist. This is all good. This is what we're looking for. Now, as interesting as this schema is, there are some limitations to it. For example, if we're asking the question, what are the email addresses of students who received an F for CSC 263 in the fall of 2019, we currently do not have the ability to answer that question by creating a single SQL query. In this video, we'll explore uh, several different ways by which we can do that. To answer this question, we first have to start analyzing it a little bit more. We're asking for the email addresses of students who received an F for CSC 263 in the fall of 2019. And what we see there really is a selection and a projection. What we're looking for in our output is only a list of email addresses, nothing more. So we have to make sure that we project of our final results only the email addresses. Then we have to find a way to only um, include those email addresses of students who received an F for CSC 263 in the fall of 2019. And we know how to do that. That is um, just simply a selection based on three criteria. The problem arises when we find out that it's easy to find a list of all student IDs belonging to students who received an F to CSC 263 in the fall of 2019. And it's easy by looking at the student's table to find out what the email address is of a student if you have their ID. But what we're looking for is a combination of the both. So let's figure out how we are going to do that. Let's first look at how not to solve this query. What we don't want to do is go select the email address from grades and students where the grade is an F and the term is fall 2019 and the course is 263. Because that returns two results. Yet if we look at the individual records by themselves from grades, we see that there is only one student who received a grade. And so if we know that only one student received the grade and we're asking the question, show me the email addresses of all students who received an F and that returns two students, we know that something is wrong. 
And the reason for that is that by listing multiple tables here in the from part of the query performs a Cartesian product on those tables. I can list as many tables as I want there, but I have to be careful with what I do. So this creates the Cartesian product. That's not what we want. What we're only interested in is um, the grades matched with the students to who they have been assigned. And so in order to fix that, um, we have to edit our query a little bit um, and make sure that we add that extra restriction that says, but only include the common fields in our output. So we can edit our query. Oh, that wasn't the one. And we can go start again, select the email address from students and grades, um, where the grade equals the F and the course ID equals 263 and the term equals fall 2019. But we want to make sure that we link those two together. So instead of just starting with all of the criteria that we need for um, our selection, let's add one more and say students.id equals grades.studentid. That's the common um, field that they have. So by adding this one constraint, this one thing that we're only saying that we're only interested in those elements of the Cartesian products where the student's ID number in the student's table matches with the student ID field in the grades table, um, we'll solve our problem. Notice there's no semicolon. This when I save this, um, I will not get an automatic execution. Semicolon, enter. Oops, um, typo. Um, the field is called stock ID. And now ID indeed only have, let's look at the raw result. Uh, indeed only student ID number one for course ID 263 in the fall of 2019 received an F. Um, and instead of showing the student ID number, we went into the students tables and looked up which um, email address belongs to the student ID with number one. So mission accomplished one way. We have another way of doing this though. Oh, let's clear the screen and start building the second query. So let's again uh, start our query. We're going to start with select email. We're still interested only in the email address. And um, that's in the students table. But now we're going to explicitly say inner join um, with the grades table. And what is the common attribute that they have? Well, we have students.id has to be equal to grades.studentid. And now we can add our additional constraints, which was the grade has to be an F, and the term has to be fall 2019, and the course ID has to be 263. You get the same result. Now, notice that this is exactly the same query as the one before. Uh, the only difference is that it reads a little different. Um, might be easier to do it like this, be a little bit more consistent in indentation and all of that stuff. But you know, in the end, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, um, the benefit that we're doing here, um, and now let me point it out for a second, is that in some cases, this is easier to understand because your query now explicitly tells you what to do. But it's also better to recognize the, the, the distinct components, right? Here we have the um, the projection. Here we have the source of the data, which is students joined to grades, and here we have the restriction. Either way of these is completely okay. There is no, uh, it's not saying that one is better than the other, or that one takes more resources than the other, or that one is faster than the other. It is two ways to express the exact same thing. Um, whichever one you prefer, uh, that's up to you. Let's consider another problem. Let's say that we have the assignments that uh, tells us to list all student email addresses and their grades, um, specifically their grade points, for CSC 263 in the fall 2019 semester. Now, the problem that we're going to run into is that an inner join will only list those students who actually received a grade. 
Let's take a look and see what this means on the terminal. I made a few changes to the tables, the table structure, the schema. Um, the transitive relationship that existed between grade and grade point, I removed from this table and I created a new table of grade points um, that just for now lists that the grade A means four points. I haven't filled out the rest yet. Um, if we look at the grades, we now see that students ID 1 and 2 have grades. Student ID 1 failed the course. Student ID 2 did very well and received an A. So if I start building my query again, um, I can do this pretty easily because we're pretty good at this now. Uh, we're going to go email, comma, uh, grade for now. Um, from uh, grades, uh, which we're going to do an inner join uh, with students. Oh, in a join with students uh, on on what well grades dot stud id is um, students dot id and let's stop there for a second. This is indeed our query. Well, we would have to add a couple of extra conditions to it if we wanted to be really in line with the assignment. So let's just make sure we do that. So where term equals fall 2019 and course ID equals 263. Um, yeah, that's it. Same, same result set because those are the only grades we have. It becomes trickier when we start extending this query. Um, oh, it looks like we missed a few, bit, uh, few bits. Um, it becomes trickier when we start extending this well, it doesn't like me today. Okay, we'll go old-fashioned. Um, this query by now also joining uh, with the grade points table. Uh, in a join, grade points. And we know that grades.grade refers to grade points dot grade. So a few things now will start going wrong. Um, let me just demonstrate. The first one is, oh, not the one I expected. Um, for whatever reason, my query is unhappy and does not like its history anymore. So we'll go do it the same way again. Oh, I had a semicolon back here. I didn't need that one. So the first error that I did expect is this error message here. The column reference grade is ambiguous. If we look at the table, grades has a grade field in it, but grade points also has a grade field in it. And the query processor wants to know which one do you want to see, one or the other. And so that means that we have to start putting in the fully qualified name, which in this case would just be putting the table name in front of it. Um, so whenever you are dealing with a field name that is deter defined in more than one location, always put the table name in front of it. And so now that problem has been solved. Unfortunately, that's not the only problem that we have to deal with, because at this point, I see that uh, Jay Smith, um, and let me just update it one more time, uh, we wanted the great points in there as well. We see that Jay Smith received an A, which is four great points, but for whatever reason, my F is now gone. It no longer exists. It's not list of the output anymore. And if we double check, we'll uh, look at the grades and we'll definitely see it's still there. The reason why it's not part of the output is that we have the grade points table that this F field does not have a counterpoint for. And in full inner join, we only see those results that match on both sides. What I really want is all the results in my first um, column. And if there's a match in the second query, I want to see those results as well. But if there's no match, I still want it in the output. And that's called an outer join. So we're going to go back to this query and edit this not to become an inner join, but an outer join. And if we're saying we want everything from the first table and only uh, the matches from the second table, um, we call it the left outer join. And now all of a sudden, my output is back again. 
So when we're talking about these joint conditions, you have to be really careful what you're asking for. Are you looking for an inner join or are you looking for an outer join? In this case, we're looking for the left outer join on grade points because we definitely want to see those ones where we don't have a grade point defined yet as a blank field, but we want to see only the matches of the students who actually received their grades. That's the difference between an inner join and an outer join. And with that, we have now looked at how we can create queries that span multiple tables and whether we link up those tables using the Cartesian product within selection operator or using an inner join or an outer join keyword, it doesn't really matter. We always go through the same stages, which would be one, identify in what relations your data exists. If that is more than one relation, find out how those relations um, are related to each other through relationships, then figure out if you need inner joins or outer joins, and then lastly is crafting the query. Now we can also go more advanced and we can, for example, first create a query that spans multiple tables and then apply aggregate operations to its results. We can mix and match however we want. Um, for now though, uh, we'll stop here. We've looked at uh, multi-table queries um, and for the rest, you know, we can continue whatever um, follows from that as, as we already know. There's one more video left in the series here on the structured query language, and that is how we can deal with subqueries. And once we've done that in the next video, um, we are ready to move on to discussing some of the internals of a database management system.